And we're back, guys. Tennis in a minute. I'm your host, Good Energy. I give you the rundown on tennis coverage every day, and we are back. That's right. Corey Coco Goff, the future of tennis. She recently talked about how she's looking forward to the Olympics, and her goal is to come back with a medal. Doesn't have to be gold. Doesn't have to be silver. Could even be bronze. She said her goal is to come back with a medal. What do you think, guys? Now, she talked about the challenge of how traditionally she has to prepare for grass season after clay season. But the challenge here is preparing to go back to clay season, but after grass season. Now, Coco said that's a transition she's never had to make. However, she's talked about in the past that clay is probably her favorite surface and a lot of people don't know that that's right ladies and gentlemen now coco is a junior slam winner at the french open we saw her make the rolling girls championship a couple of years ago where she lost to Igas fiantek but she put up a very amazing fight had a very deep run in the draw there now coco has done well on clay season historically but the reality here is if you're not aware or familiar, I think most of you guys are if you follow the channel, guess where this Olympic tournament is being held? France, that's right. We're going to be there supporting the ladies, guys. We're making the journey overseas to France. Uh, it's going to be great. I've been to France before. So, bonjour, comment allez-vous, you guys. You guys know, look, hello, how are you? I say it all the time. If you're not from France, uh Hopefully you can appreciate the respect and love I have for France. A beautiful country. Uh, I would definitely wish they would change their policy a little bit more, but we're not going to get into policy. That's not a political channel. But nonetheless, guys, Corey Coco Golf, how's she going to do? Now, if in case you're not aware, the Tokyo game, she had to pull out because she had COVID. That's right, guys. COVID-19 struck her, which was horrible because she was representing. And look, so young, I mean... What was she? Coco's 20 now. So I want to say she was, I want to say she was 17, right? So she was 17 years old, um, 17 or 18. I want to say 17. Who's that? Yeah, so she was 17 then. So representing the the United States, um, she's been literally inside the top 10 forever, right? But the last time she had, or I guess her best run at the French Open was a couple years ago against Igas Fiantek where we saw her take out Rebecca Marino, the giant from Canada in straight sets. She actually gave her donut in the first round. The second round, she took on Allison Van Upwick, who um, does pretty good. She's from, uh, I want to say she's from uh, Belgium, right? Uh, she gave her breadstick in the second round. The third round, she took on Kanepi. Now, kanepi has got a lot of power. I see Sabalenka kind of... Um, I say Sabalenka's, what, 26 now? She had her birthday. I say by the time Sabalenka reaches... I say around 29 or 30. Her game's probably going to be comparable to Kanepi. We're going to see her movement slow down a bit. And we're going to see just really just a baseliner, an aggressive baseliner that can't really cover ground much. And I think that's where Coco's going to probably start to excel. So, what, three to four years, Coco will be around 24. I think Coco will probably see Coco have years where she, she'll win two to three slams a year. You know, in particular, I could see her winning uh, like the Australian Open, Wimbledon, and the U.S. Open. I could see her winning three slams in a year for probably a two to three year span where she's going to jump up in slams to double digits. When players like Sabalenka get old, nearing out her 30s, the same with Rebecca, and, uh, the same with Iga. You know, Iga's still a few years older than Coco. Then I think Coco's going to her assert her dominance on tour where she wins two or three slams a year if not wins all four because we're talking about clay season here and that run where she made the championship against Igas Fiontech she took out Mertens in the round of 16 she gave Mertens a bagel she took out Sloan in the quarterfinal seven five six two she took out Martina Trevor Trevor Trevisan who got past Layla Fernandez that would have been a showdown with Layla that would have been amazing she gave Martina a breadstick who is a uh, double digit clay champion on the lower level right martina's insanely good on clay and then ego would give coco a breadstick beating her in straight sets 6163 now coco talked about how nervous she was she had anxiety going into that final because so much pressure was on her and this is the objective of this channel right wherever there's fair use criticism and we can apply it it's fair game we're going to cover the story but the ladies that I cover, and a lot of people say this, they say, oh, well, good energy. You always say good things about everyone. I do. 
because the reality is we want to give the players their flowers and their respect. We're not here to bash players. If it's fair use criticism and they're doing something they shouldn't be doing, then we're going to talk about it, okay? Yeah, that's fair game. But other than that, we want to congratulate the players for being amazing. And the, the goal for this channel is to promote the sport, right? That's why I do the videos because for me, it it is something I'm passionate about. Right. I love watching tennis. I love playing tennis. I'm passionate about it. And I want people to be as excited as I am about the sport. So that's why I do so many videos and cover the sport because I'm watching it anyway. Right. I might as well bring it to the fans that, you know, want to hear the stats. I want to see the plays. They want to hear how amazing the players are as well as hear me talk. Right. But nonetheless, guys, can Coco win gold, silver or bronze? Can she medal at the French Open? Well, look at the draw. She went through, and I say this all the time, Coco has the hardest draws. Why? Because she's such a big attraction. They want to see her play the big names on tour. It's because she brings and drives so much revenue to the organization. So she's always, I mean, look at the draw. She, look at that U.S. Open draw. Three slam champions? That's insane. Her draws are always tough. But can she medal is the question. I think she can. Now, she had to pull out of the last Olympic Games in Japan because uh, of COVID. And she was very, very sad. Um, she didn't have a choice. She said it was out of her control. There's nothing she could do. So the officials would not let her play. So she said she was literally just crying and sad and depressed. But a lot of the older players on tour really um, gave her the comfort and, you know, just helped keep her positive and in, in, a, in a, a good mental place. I think Coco will medal. I do. And a lot of people don't realize Coco has said France is her favorite city to play. And she's trained with Patrick in that facility for years with players like Linda Favertova, Brenda Favertova. I mean, Coco said she's known Brenda since she was like nine. And by the way, I was going to do a preview and prediction video, but I really don't like these matches this first round. I mean, I, I mean, I could tell you who's going to win, but I just I just don't like this draw. Um but I do, I think, mentioning Brenda Favertova, she's going to play Coco's uh, doubles partner of last tournament in Madrid, Taylor Townsend. Now, listen, guys, Taylor Townsend is taking on Brenda Favertova, and a lot of people think Brenda can win that match. Now, if you're not familiar, Brenda Favertova, we're going to shift gears her for a minute. She had a higher win percentage on clay last year than Igas Fiontek, guys, over 90%. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, over 90%. And um, can she beat Taylor Townsend? Here's the thing. Uh, Brenda's going to have the movement advantage, but Taylor's going to have um, much more variety than Brenda. Taylor's going to have the two-way play. I think she's going to dominate midcourt and the net. I do think Brenda's going to have the opportunity to hit passing shots against a much bigger, maybe even slower opponent on clay. Uh, Brenda Favertova is pretty amazing. I've said I do think in the future Brenda Favertova will win the French Open. And Taylor Townsend and Coco Golf, in case you, I should have covered the matches. They did make it to the quarterfinal uh, in Madrid playing doubles together. But nonetheless, guys, really quick, the Taylor Townsend match, um, I think that's going to be a tough match for Taylor Townsend. I really do. And personally, I think I mean, I mean, she lost to uh, Mira and Dreva in Madrid. It did go three, but um, and remember, Brenda Favertova beat Mira and Dreva a couple times. She actually gave her a bagel one time they played uh, in a championship match on the lower level. So Brenda's, she's so big time. She's not even trying to win Junior Slam. She could technically still be going for the French Open Junior. She doesn't even care. That's how big time she is. Um, I, I could see Brenda winning the first set and I could see Taylor Townsend having to come back and win it in three. So, I mean, uh, I, I mean, I think Taylor should win the match, but I could see it. I could see Brenda winning the first set and I could see Taylor just having to scramble and, you know, put together a comeback. I think it's going to be a good match. They never played together, but Brenda Favertova, in case you're not familiar, 42 wins on clay last year, 51 wins on clay the previous year. She's solid. She's 3-1 and one on clay this year. And every time I turn around, she's winning a lower-level title. But watch out for that match. Uh, and by the way, the last time Brenda played Coco um, earlier this year on the Australian leg of the tour, Coco, I, I felt Brenda taking that long bathroom break kind of upset Coco. And she just, she served up a bagel. 
yeah, en route to her championship there in Auckland. She, yeah, she had to serve up a bagel. She made Coco wait too long, and Coco started the season winning 10 matches in a row. Will Coco medal? I think she will. Just having not had the opportunity to play in Tokyo when she was hot and just blazing, 17-year-old phenom, I think she's going to come a, come away with the medal at least. Uh, I think Iga's got to be a favorite to 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 medal in France. I mean, she's got to on clay, like, please. So, but here's the thing. There's a difference between the Olympics and any other tournament. There's going to be three people that can walk away with a medal. So uh, my picks to medal, uh, I'm going to say Igas Fiontech. I'm going to say Arena Sabalenka. And I'm going to say Coco Golf. Your number one, two, and three players should medal. Uh, Elena Rybakina, I I think that the transition from glass to from grass to clay, I think it's going to be tough for a lot of players. You have to be in the right spot mentally, but physically. I don't know if physically she'll be able to hold up from that. You know, there's going to be a lot of pressure on her as a Wimbledon champion to perform there. So, and mentally, if you're not right, switching back from surface, especially with some the tournament so big as the Olympics, Coco's calling it the fifth Grand Slam. I think Coco's going to medal for sure. So that's my pick there, guys. Stay tuned. Uh, I'll probably get back to covering matches. Not tomorrow. I just don't like to draw. You know, I, I don't want to put out picks. My goal is to, to give you 80% picks. I mean, I could do that tomorrow, but I just I just don't like to draw. For example, we have a match like Diane Perry taking on Anna Blinkova. The last time those two played, Anna Plinkova literally, have you ever seen a player win a set by not having to win a point? That's right. So Anna Blinkova was up, what I want to say, she had the opportunity to go up um, 5-2, right, in the first set. Long story short, she's serving now to stay in the set. Diane Perry wins the first set without having to win a single point on the last service game. That's right. Double faults and errors. Anna Blinkova just double faulted the set away. Matches like that, I just, I don't really want to even cover, to be honest with you, because Anna Blinkova, she's technically, and you know, I can't even say it because the way she's playing, I talked about how lately I just don't think she's in form or physically fit. And I think that we all know Diane Perry prefers to play on clay. She's from France, right? She got her big break a couple of years ago. Uh, I mean, I've know, known about her on the lower level, but she got her big break a couple of years ago against Barbara Kachikova. And then she ran into Red Hot Stone Stevens, who always plays well on clay, and just destroyed her. Uh, we do have a good match. So Donna Vekic versus uh, Lesia Serenko. I think that, that's going to be a good match. Carolyn Dohai, Bernardo Pera, two Americans. I would hate to pick against two Americans, but that's going to be a good match. Sasnovich, who's been struggling, taking on Anne Karolina Smidlova, who just runs out of gas. You know, and it's just the matches tomorrow are horrible. Osaka and Buell, that's going to be a good match uh, because Buell, is, she's so talented. She has so much variety on clay. Can Osaka keep up with that? Can Buell handle the power of Osaka? That's going to be a good match. I mean, Carly taking on Laura Sigmund, you know, I'd rather not. Begu Masarova, that's going to be a good match. I would watch that. Um, Kenan Bronzetti, can Kenan get on the board? What's going on with Kenan? I told, I mean, look, some good matches tomorrow. But anyways, guy. Anyways, guys, um, I think Coco will medal, and I think she's going to, I think she's going to give it her all because the Olympics only come around four years. We could also have someone come out of the blue, like uh, Puig, for um, for Puerto Rico. No one thought she was going to win the gold medal. You know, I mean, no one thought Belinda Benchik would win the gold medal before Belinda won it. Everyone thought Marquette Von Drusova was going to win it, and no one thought she would win it. You know, Svitolina won bronze over Rebecca. So I think we could also have a sleeper, but this video is about Coco. I do think she will bring home at least a medal for the United States. I, I just, I don't see anyone on clay that, I don't see three players on clay that's better than Coco. You know, Coco plays really good on clay. She's a junior clay champion. She's already made a French Open final. You know, not too many players on tour can say they made a Rolling Girls championship as a teenager. So that's it, guys. Like the video. Show some love. Give me your thoughts. Will Coco medal?
tennis in a minute. We'll be back. 